Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine, where today's episode is going to be such a killer one on open houses, brought to you by the one and only Shelby Johnson. She's going to cover how she got in her very, very first open house in Lexington, Kentucky. Her, she got 60 parties, six zero parties, how she got 17 offers with a lot of them well above the list price, all within 24 hours after that one open house, exactly step-by-step step how she did it to prepare to get that many inside her open house, all with spending only $376. You're listening to The Agent Gold Nine, which is the show for real estate agents who are <laughs> sick and tired of, you know, whack a mole their way through life and are ready to build systems and really crush it in their businesses. We are uh, Shelby Johnson and Allie Garced, former veterans turned real estate entrepreneurs and combined closed hundreds of transactions in the agent and investor space. And now we're here to share everything we know with you and hang out and have a ratchet ass time. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Welcome to The Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. Okay, Allie, as you know, this past week has been a pretty exciting week for your girl here because you know that I have been out of production for a hot fucking minute, a hot minute. You know, August 2021 is when we shut down the traditional five pillars realty group, like that other team, the, the old school team, 50 50 models, all the stuff. And then I had, the you know, that I joined. <laughs> The month Wait, that I no, joined you guys. Yes. Well, no, I know. I was like, Alice here, I really can't fucking do this anymore. Like, we, I quit. I literally quit. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So since then, I have not been a producing agent. And since then, I've moved to a brand new city. And I, you know, don't know barely anyone here. And um, yeah, but then decided to get relicensed. You know the whole story. And I just had my very first listing like into my sphere and then into my lap, into my hemisphere, not sphere to be confusing with sphere influences. Um, whatever. I'm fucking, I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> so my first listing and it went live last week or whatever. It's just been a complete, um, so much has happened since then. So I really want to share with you what happened because as you may have seen, as many of you may have seen, I shared this little story on my Instagram where of my open house, where it would literally looked like an estate, like auction sale. There were people swarming like in lines trying to get into the, like it was fucking crazy. And so I had so many people being like, how, 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 how I have open houses and no one shows up consistently. How are you getting people there? Not to mention what followed there, which I did not put fully out on my story. I put on my little, whatever, um, that we got 17 offers. So Damn. in this market, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So pretty cool. 40 plus, I say 40 because that's how many people signed in. I think there were closer to 60 people there at the open house and then 17 offers. So the question continuously is like, Shelby, what the fuck? How did you do that? How can I do this? And so that's what I'm here to share today, Allie. I love it. I'm so excited. I literally just this morning, I was scrolling on uh, Facebook and uh, somebody you know how there are some trolls out there. I think people ask questions just to like, I don't know why they're asking some questions that are just so dumb. <laughs> like there are, I like, okay, there are no dumb questions, but there are some questions that are just dumb. And, uh, and I, I think that yes. was one of them is related to open houses. And everyone on this thread was like, oh, I can't get anybody. I got two parties. I got four parties. And so this is, maybe I will post on that dumb thread. <laughs> this episode to help everyone. <laughs> Perfect. As leverage. Okay. Well, um, I do want to explain the situation first because I don't think this is going to, this is not the right strategy for every property and every market and all the things. So why, you know, and I'll get into that, but the situation is this is a duplex in Lexington, Kentucky. And as we know, not every market is still popping with the investor, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid and shit like that. But in regard to um, duplexes, there are some on the market, but 
they're pretty few and far between. So people do get excited when they come on, first of all. And then also, this is in a very hot zip code. So those two things made it exciting regardless. But we did a lot of work to hype the shit out of this thing. And the property, other than the fact that it is a duplex and that it's in a hot zip code, is otherwise not impressive. You know, like it's it's tenant occupied. It's under rented. It's The condition is fine. It's nothing amazing. I would say it's like a C. You know, and so it's like, you know, whatever. But under rented is going, great. Yes, for no, for sure. buyers, nice for buyers, and it's it is nice too. Like one just cited twelve month lease, and the other side is to month to month. And so if it wanted to be like a house hacker or something like that, they could come in and like you know whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's the situation. Our goal, when I say our, I mean Drake and I. Our goal coming in was, of course, to sell the shit out of the property. Like literally, you were hired to market and sell as a listing agent. That is your fucking job to market and to sell. Um, and so, of course, that's absolutely what we wanted to do. We our job is to get the most attention, the most excitement, this competition, this build, this hype, this interest. So that way, you go into a bidding war, which is literally what happened. Um, but our secondary goal also was to get as much attention as possible for ourselves, for our brand. Cause that's another thing that I don't think people always think about with listings. It's like each time you have a listing, it is an opportunity to put your best foot forward for everyone that's watching, whether it's other agents in the market, they're going to judge how you market and how you present yourself. Also other people who follow you, who may are looking for an agent in the future, you know, they are literally, this is your opportunity to showcase what you are able to do as an agent. And also our other goal was to impress the shit out of the seller so much so that he cannot stop bragging, talking about it. Like these are our goals going into it, not just like, so the reason I bring that up is because I want like this holistic thought process. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Allie nods and I get a thumbs up. Um, and then we also considered with this marketing, like, of course we considered, you know, the normal stuff, like, just listed or coming soon, like flyers and stuff like that. But you know, you, if you're a listener of the show, then you know, Allie and I are like really obsessed with the digital space. And we are obsessed with one to many, like, so door knocking is one to one. Um, and like calling around the circle prospecting the neighborhood, hey, we have something, you know, coming up soon. That's a one to one. We wanted to do a one to many. And we also wanted to test some stuff that we'd been toying with ideas. So this is how it went down. We had, um, Luckily, there was a turnover right as I was getting wind of this property. So before the tenant moved in, I was able to go and get photos of the property, which is often really, really challenging if you have a tenant occupied property. So thank God it was fresh, you know, got these photos, whatever. Then what we decided to do was we decided to capitalize on coming soon. And I know that coming soon are actually different in different markets. So let me explain why this is so important in Lexington in particular and why you should understand what coming soon means in your own market. Because in Lexington, what coming soon means is that the property is on the MLS, but the MLS does not feed Zillow, Realtor.com, all of those other sources. It is, it is constrained. It is just coming soon on the MLS for agents to view only. And this is really, really fucking important if you're going to do the strategy that Drake and I decided to do, which was we decided to run ads on Meta, on Facebook that said duplex in Lexington. It was a single photo. We didn't give him more. <laughs> we gave him one fucking photo of the exterior. It said duplex in all caps in Lexington. And then it had the little, like this little emoji. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm like doing that, sh that little secret thing where it said, you won't find this on Zillow. And that is the ad that we pushed two different campaigns for. We did one campaign that was 50, anyone 50, mi 50 mile radius of Lexington. Louisville and Cincinnati, which are the three biggest cities that are closest to Lexington. We did a lead campaign for that. And when I say lead campaign, it means that we were targeting people who have previously shown interest in real estate investing. Um, so that was the first campaign. And then the second campaign that we did was an awareness campaign for all of Lexington. And the reason why we did the first campaign is because we wanted to capture leads, of course, who are interested in this property. And then the second one is kind of what we talked about in the beginning. We want people around Lexington to get a, hey, this is like a welcome party for us. Shelby and Drake, Five Pillars team are coming in hot to this market. And we did this while we are on coming soon status for three days. We did it from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we spent a total of 300 and 
actually, we actually kept running the ad. So this is a total of $370 from the from Tuesday when we went coming soon up until Sunday, which was the open house. That's when we ran the campaign. So it's really not that much money. If you're going to send out mailers, you're literally going to do that much anyway. Um, and from this, let me pull up the stats. From that campaign, we got 136 inquiries, like lead captures, 136 leads filled out our form and 94 phone calls, 335 emails, 830 texts total for this property. And we reached 69,245 people, not including the organic posts that I also did on the local Facebook pages. So huge amount of reach, right? Dang. Okay. I was going to, I don't know if you had any questions. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So all you did was you posted this on your personal, like from your personal Facebook page into other Facebook pages or was this a business account? Okay. This was an actual ad. Like the, we did two different ad campaigns. So it was not a post that we boosted. So a boost and like an ad are different. Oh, this okay. Like, so you can you can target specific pages in order to you run can, the ad too? You can target specific. So there's the the people, which is the two ad campaigns we did. And then I said that all of these stats did not include my organic posts on local Facebook pages. So I did the thing that if you're not already doing this, you know, you go, you have your VA do it or you do it and you go on Facebook and you search Lexington real estate, moving to Lexington, moving to Kentucky, all of those pages where it's like, Lexington real estate investors investing in the bluegrass. Like you should have like literally 20. I have like 20 pages that are literally local real estate pages that I had my VA go in as me and post on those pages in addition to the two different ad campaigns we were doing. Nice. Nice. Does that make sense? How much is the total again of how much you of how much you paid for the ads? $370 for the ad campaign. That was two campaigns over the span of Tuesday. Six days. <laughs> yes, I just Tuesday, use my fingers. Six days. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> like, Dude, that, that's awesome. Take off my socks and use my toes. I don't know. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay, first of all, it would have cost you more to send mm-hmm. one round of mailers. Totally. And it would have, uh, and as far as your time goes, it would have cost you more in your time if you were to just door knock, even if it was the neighbor. Oh my God. Um, yes. How did, okay. So you did no door knocking, no physical zero. Product. We did nothing except what I just listed, which was the campaigns. And then the the post, which my, literally my VA did. And I posted, no, I posted one story. <laughs> I did post one story about like coming soon. Yeah. That <laughs> really is thought. dope. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 859-267-3849. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. And I posted, no, I posted one story. (laughs) I did post one story about like coming soon. Yeah, that (laughs) is dope. Maybe we should have Drake on here to talk about Facebook ads for those that want to yeah. learn how. You know, I think that would be a great idea. Getting him to do it is another story. Um, <laughs> but we can absolutely try. I know the one time he's a little, you know, the one time this was probably like a year ago or whatever. He's like, I'm going to do a Facebook ad thing for, you know, any like he put it out there and no one came. So now he's a little, he's a little... <laughs> Oh no! I'm gonna go to Drake's Instagram and shoot him a DM and be like, "We would love to know about Facebook campaigns, Drake. Please." (laughs) Yeah, like comment on this YouTube video if you want the step by step of how to do a Facebook because clearly they know how to do it. Um, So if you're interested, let us know. We won't we won't have this episode out in case we get no feedback feedback on it. One of the craziest things is when we did this ad, you know, like you won't see this on Zillow, you know, and it's just the one picture. So literally people are dying. They're like, I can't find this on Zillow. I don't have the address, you know, of this property. I know the zip code. I know it's a duplex mm. in Lexington. I have no more pictures. I Now I am forced to fill out this fucking form that I don't really want to. 
because I don't, you know, want to give people my contact information, but I want the information on the property because I can't find it anywhere else. And I think that that is one of the really important things in this particular strategy. And then having the form and the triggers set up beforehand made this bearable because there were so much, like so much inquiry and so much interest from this. The fact is like when people would comment or whatever, we would just paste the link, be like, Hey, look, if you want the information, just fill out the form. And the form was super simple. It was name, phone, email. Do you already, are you already working with an agent? Like literally just that. And then when they would fill out the form, what would happen is they would automatically get an email that I drafted beforehand, which has all of the information that they could possibly want. Because guys, if you're getting in front of 69,000 eyes and you have this many, you know, 136 people reach out for information, it, this goes back to the one-to-one versus one-to-many. If you are individually answering and sending emails for what's the rent rate? Do you have a copy of the leases? Like what's the, how many beds bath? What's the square footage? You know, what's the, literally I have the entire thing. What's the age of the roof? What's the age of the mechanicals? Do you have the seller's disclosure? All this stuff. If we were doing that one-to-one with everyone, we would have fucking died. Literally just fucking died. And more importantly than that, we would have missed people. And then that idea of that amazing reputation that we're trying to create for ourselves is downgraded because, oh, I reached out and they never even got back with me. Oh, I put in my information. I never heard from them. Like that is the quickest way. (laughs) to get people to be like, fuck them, you know? And so having this set up ahead of time, I literally, and thank God, you know, we, Ali, we've worked with investors. We are personally investors, but I knew like exactly what they were going to ask. I started out with like, number one, the seller is not distressed, you know, no seller financing or sub two. Yeah. Number two, you know, like that being said, like I literally listed it all out. And so they filled in the form, they got the email and then it followed up with a text being like, Hey, you know, this is Shelby. I just sent you an email. Please check your junk if you don't see it. And so all of that was done through follow-up boss too. And when they filled out the form, the way that Drake set it up, Drake is amazing. um, It would tag, you know, the property address for that specific person. And the answers to the form would plug into the CRM. So then when, you know, they reply with a question or whatever, and be like, Hey, that was in the email (laughs) or whatever. um, Then yeah, I think the, okay. So the takeaway from that is have your shit together up front think through what people are going to ask. So you're prepared and give them everything that they would would want and ask for to alleviate your time. Perfect. Okay. So then again, to clarify how many questions, um, you put up the barrier, you know, like, Hey, we need your information in order to get, in order to get the information on the property. It was, do you have an agent? What, What were the other questions again? Name, phone, email. Are you already working with an agent? Just those. Okay. So super, super Mm -hmm. low and super simple. You get what you need. And then from there, that's a follow up. So you did everything there on follow up boss, right? Because you not go high level. Okay. Follow up boss. Then it had an email. It sent the like email with attachments or, or was an it just email on the body with, of the text? It had, a, it had a Google, it had some links in there that had a Google folder with supporting documents that had like copies of the leases and the seller's disclosure. Um, and then a couple other things like the tax information and the information on the property manager and the vendors. And then it also had like the information on like, seller expenses versus tenant expenses, like everything that the investor is ever going to want to ask was in the email and supporting documents. That's awesome. Okay, great. So hopefully to therefore eliminate back and forth future questions where you then go from one to many to one to one. Um, Right. Yeah. Well, especially since like our goal is to not work, work with buyers. I think it would be, and investors particularly, if we were more serious about like turning this into an investor specific, buyer specific business, we, 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 we could do a lot more with those leads, but they're not our fucking lead ideal client. And so it, but it was really important to capture because already I'm working with another seller who, I mean, her property is, the whole situation is just a mess and really the best person buyer for that is a live-in flipper, like a very specific, a, like a live-in flipper is how to get her the most money, whatever. And before I'd be like, shit, well, how do I, I don't even, I don't know any, now I can go right to my CRM and I can select the tags, you know, 2057, the, the property that we just had and literally text or email all of them being like, Hey, I have an off market opportunity for a live in flip in Lexington. Are you interested? So now I have 136 people who I know are interested in real estate and investing in this particular market who now I can use for my other sellers. 
that's exactly where I was going to go with this is like, how, what is going to be your follow up after this? Is it only going to be when you have listings off market in the coming soon status that you'll send them? Or is there anything else that you're going to be, um, following up with. So this is a giant pool that I'll use for blast. Like we just talked about, but also from this, I have the 17 people who did offer and those now are turning into, I have a buyer letters to other duplex owners so I can get listings and duplex because I literally have 16 people whose offer were not accepted, who are ready, qualified to offer on a property. So that's a, another marketing strategy in the future. Um, but also just in general, those are people that I'm going to use on when I finally have a newsletter, <laughs> which I don't have on, but you know, if I have a newsletter yeah. or, you know, in our YouTube channel, when we have like a really applicable video, this is where you can send it out that way. Um, oh, and I actually had, there was one dude, only one out of 136, but I more thought it, you know what I mean? But one dude was like, you guys are literally the best agents I've ever experienced. And then he was like, when I'm ready to sell, I'm definitely going to hit you guys up. And I was like, perfect. So I added a little tag seller. And now he's like on my seller follow up. You know? Nice. So it's just those like, I don't know. It's there's nothing like one. I'm not gonna tell you like one thing, but it's like a bunch of fucking things. You know what I mean? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 859-267-3849. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Okay, sweet. That is so dope. I love that. Okay, I have another technique where we're, we're not, we're almost done. We're not quite done. Hell but, yeah. <laughs> is that okay? Hey, boring? Yes, <laughs> please. More. Always. I'm like looking at you. Okay. So then we didn't even get talk. We, the part that we didn't talk about yet is the fact that we got, I think, 60 people at the open house. And how we did this was when we went, so we were coming soon from Tuesday to Friday. And then on Friday, it went live, but we completely blocked showings entirely until Sunday at three which was our open house, which was only from 33.30 on Sunday, 30 minute block because it's tenant occupied, you know, and disturbing the tenants for everyone is like a pain in the ass. But that forced <laughs> wow. literally everyone to be there at that time, which is why we, and I also, you know, I put it out on Zillow. So it was like literally anyone and their mom could show up and go through this house, which is, was a little scary actually. But, um, we had a process for that as well, but that's how we got so many people there. And what I'm the technique in this, like, of course, we had the excuse of it's tenant occupied, we're not going to have multiple showings for doing this is your one shot. But you could do the same strategy with a coming soon. And then if you go live, like block all the showings until Saturday, whatever your open house is. And then that way you could prompt like really, really force people to show up at that time. And of course, you're going to have agents like I had a couple agents who were like, my client can't see it until blah, blah, blah. Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, what are you going to do? <laughs> like you, sh you can show up with as a qualified rep, they can send a different rep. Like, I'm so sorry, this is our one shot for that. And so you're gonna have to as an agent, you're gonna have to use your own discretion about like how far you want to fucking force and push this. And again, I it was a little easier because I had tenants in there. So I literally was like, we're not disturbing the tenants, you have to figure it out. But the concept is still there. Like you can control when you want to allow showings to work in your favor. That's great. I love yes, I love that. To do this, one we had two QR codes up on each side of like the building because there was like there was like steps and I was like standing there like I felt like a king addressing the fucking peasants in the courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> All you peasant so investors, <laughs> peasant investors. Oh my god, no, but um, I, I was like, okay, how do I get these people to sign in? Which clearly didn't work because only forty signed in. There was like probably sixty there, but for like people did you know sign in more than normal. Um, and the, how we did that is that we said that the seller wanted to verify that the buyers had eyes on prior to offering to eliminate the chance of, you know, the likelihood of it falling through down the road. So we used it as a verification process. Like if you want to submit an offer on this property, you need to acknowledge that you were here. Um, so that way, 
you know, whatever. And then we had two different QR codes. One was, have we already spoken to you? If we were, if you've already filled out a form, just do this one to acknowledge that you were here. If you've never spoken with us before or got the information on this property, you do this one. And that sent them through the normal form funnel, except with an additional tag that said open house. That's I it. have, I remember my question and I have a new question before I lose a new question. Let me ask that one first with your two different funnels in follow up boss. Uh, being that I don't have follow up boss, is that just like an active campaign similar to KB Core? We could just toggle it on. It's already pre made, or did you have to fill that out? Oh, or, yeah, set it no. up. No. Yeah, no, you can just turn it on. Okay, nice. Yeah. And the, can you go through the timeline again? So, all of this, the open house was book, was while it was coming soon status still? No. Okay. Yes. Good question, Allie. Great question. Okay. So, we went coming soon uh, from Tuesday until Friday. And then on Friday we went live and, but the all showings were blocked, which really there was no fucking purpose of going live. This was just like, oh, that was, we could have just kept it coming soon all the way up until whatever. It doesn't matter. We went live on Friday with showings blocked until Sunday at three and then highest and best was Monday and then selected an offer by Monday evening. Nice. That was information I put out at the Hope and House as well, where I was like, hey, if you are interested, highest and best, I set it at 10 AM, which in retrospect is a mistake. Um, it should have at least been like 12 or one because there were people, <laughs> we got like two offers from people in Utah. Um, <laughs> and they were like having issues because it was Sunday with the pre-approval and they didn't know the turnaround was going to be so quick. And so hindsight 2020, um, an afternoon highest and best timeline for would have been better, but we just worked it out with them. Um, yeah. Dang. So anyway, the whole point is we had that ahead of time, like, Hey, this is, we're doing this now. You're going to get all the information you need. Highest and best is due by this time. Also on the um, information that when they did the signing, the QR code from the open house in both of them got offer instructions. I forgot to mention okay. that. Okay. So when they did sign in, the automation was like, if you would like to offer on this property, this here are the disclosures. Like we need a signed offer to purchase. We need the pre-approval slash proof of funds. We need um, seller disclosure assigned. There's two of them. And then... Um, Oh yeah. That's what I said were the requirements. And then I also said, please also do not required, but appreciated. It's text me this. And the text was like purchase amount, earnest money, closing timeline, inspection period, just so I had like a condensed, okay, we got another one. Cause like it is, I mean, dude, it was fucking exhausting. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know that th this uh, episode is for how to create an amazing open house. Well, I do have a question though on how did you yeah. organize it? Well, I know how you organized it. You have like the, the template, anyway. the Google sheet. Yeah. Um, but how do <laughs> yeah. you pack all of this and hype it to the seller that may or may not oh know God. how good of a job you just did? Dude, how did that, you do that? It, it actually has been a little bit of a struggle just because I'm like, you don't, you still don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, still okay, don't really. understand how much we just did. Um, but it, I mean, it's a communication and work on explaining us getting excited. If you're excited, they're excited. Ali, you've talked about that before about how like you set the stage with like, yes, congratulations. You got this, you know, like, and repeating the wins, um, via text, via phone call and via email. And I did take all of the, you know, the offers and put it into that multiple offer spreadsheet that, um, I can, Put that in as the tool for this show or whatever tool you guys want. I mean, more than happy to give all the things, but it's multiple. I put all of them in there and then I grayed out the ones that weren't as good. And I like kept bright the top two contenders because there really were like two incredible standouts. Um, and then came to him with a recommendation like, hey, we have these top two. This is where I, you know, if this were my property, this is what I do. But ultimately it's his decision as to what is done. Yeah. And then also like after that, follow up with an email about like, hey, you know, of course there's the congratulations, you're under off under contract, what's next? Like all of that normal stuff, but also like, hey, just wanted to give you a breakdown of the stats. Shit. And I forgot to explain that too. We did the same thing twice before the offers came in. Like, hey, we've been on we've been in coming soon status for 24 hours. Here's your stats. Hey, we've been in coming soon status for 72 hours. This is what you know, here's your stats. So that way we can show that we're like actively pushing and working and all of that stuff. Yeah. It's a lot. Like this whole thing was like oh, so fucking much work. It's, it is, it's a ton of upfront. And then of course the day of it's you, you feel like a bodyguard. You're like, is everything okay? Like in and out, you, like herding cattle. I, I can imagine. Oh, what was my other question? Oh, 
the the question to everyone else who did not get their offer accepted. What 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 did you say? And while the offers were coming in, was it really just like a one and done? This is the offer. We're not even going to tell you, hey, your offer is shit. Maybe you want to rewrite a new one. What did that look like? This is a really good question. I'm glad you did because as we before we hit record, I was like, I'm like 47 percent prepared for going through this. If I was really prepared, I would have also touched on that. So thank you for asking the question, Allie. We did get offers in coming soon status sight unseen, like full priced offers out the gate. And I went to the seller and I was like, hey, like I strongly recommend we do not accept an offer at this time. And he's like, oh, like they're full price. These are good offers. I was like, no, <laughs> yeah. we're not doing, you know? Yeah. And so I went back. Well, to let's the... cover that. Let's cover that really quick. Why oh, do you yeah. not? Because a lot of people tell me literally one girl was like, why are you in coming soon? You have so much interest. You already have offers. I'm like, you don't under, do you, do you understand what our job is? Yeah. Like, it's not exactly the job. first offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, no dude, like I'm leaving. Literally. I would have left $40,000 on the table for my client. If I would have just done what these other agents were like, yeah, why would literally I had like a someone recommend it doesn't matter anyway so yeah we got three offers i went to the seller and i was like hey permission to tell them that you're not looking at any offers until after the open house and he's like yeah sure whatever which that's another thing too like really nice that the seller is not cold this goes back to what ali and i talk about all the time it's like where does the the lead come from for you because it dictates how much they trust you if it was a cold lead they'd probably be like what you know whatever but the the guy's been following me on instagram for years and so he's like yeah sure shelby whatever anyway bringing it back in so at that point i went back and then was like hey like thanks so much for your offer. We are doing an open house. Um, definitely be there or send a rep because we want eyes on for that. And then after that, we'll be highest and best, you know, do the next day. And so kicked those back. We kept getting verbal and I would just, I had a template of course. And I said the same thing, like, thank you so much, but you know, no. And then yes, we did. There were <laughs> some people, um, and that's always like really tough like to how much do you tell them? <laughs> how much do you recommend? But like, ultimately, it's like, hey, at this point, your your offer is not competitive, your offer is not in the running as it currently stands, if you would like to try again, like by all means. And then I would also do things like, have you considered an escalation clause? Have you considered an appraisal gap? Like not telling them what to do, but just like asking them, like, have you considered this planting the little seed so they can go back and hopefully make it way better? You know? Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So so there was some of that as well. Nice. There was. Yes, there was. Yeah. So as much as like, I wish my little email and text, like it took the bulk, it probably took like 80% of the questions away. There was still, I mean, people still want to talk to you. They still want to like, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have, what are your thoughts and feedback on all that? I, I love, like you did an outstanding job. <laughs> I, so I'm, I presume the seller is also an, is he a seasoned investor? He is a seasoned investor. Yes. Yes. It's not his primary gig. Okay. Got it. Got it. It's a side uh, hustle, but I mean, he's been doing it for a couple of years. I, and it's not like he's like out there, you know, playing hungry, hungry hippo with every property out there. Like he's got like a, a decent amount. Of rentals, but it's not like, you know, a huge amount. One of my first listings, actually, it was my very, very first listing. I had it in coming soon status after that in Tucson. It didn't work for me at the time in the market. So I we I stopped doing the coming soon. But you'll you will get these agents that think that they are just doing you and like your seller client such a favor by giving you an offer before it's even live. And this may be a, a Tucson where it's like a lot of old agents, like a lot of like, I've been doing this for 52 years. I've sold one house every single year since then. And, and they will try to stiff arm you and like bully you into like accepting uh, their offer, which is, which may be a, you know, a full price offer, but you can get so much more like yeah. never accept an offer that is still in coming soon because totally. a lot of people, a lot of other people respect the fact that it's in coming soon. Therefore they will not place an offer. Um, so yeah, the first offer yes. does not always win. No, for Rarely sure. And it's, doesn't. it's such a missed opportunity for, for your seller and for you to continue marketing. I mean, there's so many reasons, like exactly what Ali just said, um, also, I, I don't know how it is in Tucson, but here it's when it's in coming soon status, you don't see it. <laughs> like no one has walked the property and I would never recommend to my seller ugh, unless, unless they've done like their agent has gone and they've done like a thorough walkthrough and you know, they're moving, whatever. But if the buyer is local and able, I 
do you not want to accept an offer where it, the agent and or the buyer has not seen the property? Because what that means is that they're, you know, if they get an inspection down the road or they walk it down the road and their expectation does not meet reality, what are they going to do? They're going to fucking walk away and then you are going to fall out and then you're going to have to go back and go back on the market or go back to other people. And then they're instinct is what's wrong with it. What happened? Why did it fall through? And it's like, oh, well, I was just an idiot. And I let my seller accept an offer where the buyer hadn't even seen it. And they just wanted to snag it up high, especially in Kentucky. This is what's crazy. So in North Carolina, there's this thing called due diligence fee, which means so there's earnest money. I think everyone knows what earnest money is, right? It's like you put down the deposit and it's refundable if you want to back out during the inspection period. Well, in North Carolina, which is the place I was born and raised in regard to real estate, the due diligence fee is the the buyer also submits due diligence to the seller. And that is a non-refundable deposit. It is the day that the contract is signed, the money goes in the pocket of the seller. And if the buyer backs out, the seller keeps that money. And I don't know if people think it's harsh and crazy or whatever, but when I'm representing a seller, that makes so much sense because it's like now the buyer has skin in the game, baby. Like they're not just going to throw out something and be like, oh, screw it. I'll just walk. Not realizing what that does to a seller. It's like, that's so unfair, <laughs> I think. And 100%. So in, yeah. And so in Kentucky, they don't have any due diligence, which is like, I never really thought I'd be the one who was like, yeah, non-refundable deposits are the way. But like, I really don't like that buyers don't have skin in the game, you know? Yeah. Oh, 100, 100%. I have been bringing that into Arizona and whoa, am I getting some heat sometimes, you know, like <laughs> whenever I'm listing uh, a property, I, we, 90% of the time we require non-refundable earnest money. It doesn't the, all the earnest money doesn't have to be non-refundable, just a portion, Part of fucking it, yeah. 500 bucks, something. Right. Skin and in the game. These, Yes. And the buyer's agents are like, this doesn't happen here, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, then that shows me that your client is not that serious about the property. We're going to move on to the next. And so I get heat as a listing agent. um, And then as a buyer's agent, we get our offers fucking accepted with 500 bucks. You know, like (laughs) we are, we're, it seals the fucking deal every time. Yes. Oh my God. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, totally. People will be like, oh, well, there's like, we had one offer that had $25,000 in earnest money. And I'm like, but that means nothing. Yes. It literally means nothing to me. <laughs> like, yeah. it still means they can back out in their fucking 15 day requested, whatever yeah. period. Okay, whatever. Okay. Okay. I think to, I to think wrap this up, my one last question How yes. are you going to use all of these numbers and the stats and the like photos of the B roll that you took to package it to your next seller? To make this your, uh uh-oh, maybe we could delete this question. (laughs) I I don't have it yet. No, no, no. Keep it on there. It's a really, really good question. I haven't thought that far ahead. I was not that calculated in what happens after (laughs) this listing. So um, that's a great point and definitely need to do that. I've already been using it on calls, you know, when I'm talking to people and conversation, but I have not packaged that into marketing material and more advertising, which thank you for inspiring me, Allie. I will get right on that. On Maybe that you could just, <laughs> there, no, no, no. <laughs> One more thing. You could just throw all these numbers and stats into like a, a like, I don't know, chat GPT to make it like a little bit more smooth, set it yeah. to the seller, have him create a video and then boom, that's on your PDF. Oh, that's like, dude, that's so good. it comes from the seller. Yeah. That is so good. Okay. I love it. I'll do it. Yay. Um, Dude, congratulations. This this is awesome. I love this episode. Very fun. Okay, that's it. Follow us. She's the Shelby Show and Allie the Agent. Bye. (laughs) Bye.